God, over in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear students, on this special Eucharistic celebration, let us thank God for the concern, love, and support you receive each day from people who care. You have experienced signs of God's love to your parents, teachers, the administrators, and all other school personnel, friends, and relatives. Many events came, and some of them are now gone. But God never abandoned you, even for a minute. He keeps calling you to walk before Him as one family full of gratitude, love, and faithfulness, and to grow in the presence of the Spirit. We now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. The first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said amongst themselves, thinking not aright, Let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us, because his life is not like that of ours, of others, and different are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his Father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were the thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as if it were in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me whom you do not know is true. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for the homily. Just honestly, how do you feel at this time? How do you feel? Are you happy? I'm sure you're going to tell me I'm happy. Why? Because I'm moving up. You're not moving down, moving up. 
What about the parents? How do you feel that your daughters are moving up? You know, the word moving up is very interesting for me. Because when you move up, it means you have come from below. But maybe this is just a technical term. It can mean more than just the term. Well, that depends on how you understand it. But dear students, consider for a moment what this life that you have right now is not accidental nor coincidental, but where you are right now is a product of a many series of events that you have gone through. Consider for another moment your life, how your life could have been if you have taken another course of life. And perhaps you would not be here. But the fact that you are here means a lot to you and means a lot to your parents. Having said this, I recall words from one of my favorite Christian philosophers by the name of Soren Kierkegaard, who once said, and I quote, life is better understood in retrospect. Life is better understood in retrospect, unquote. That life is better understood when you try to look back and gain better insight and understanding of what your life now. But while life is better understood backwards, you must live it forward. And I think that is what you mean by moving up. You move up because from the life that you once have, you're now entering into a new stage of your life. But in order for you to understand better your life now, it's good to take a quick look at what has been. What have you, what your life has been? Consider the many failures. Consider the many successes that you have. Failures. Failures can, can mean stopping my life. There are people who have failed, and from their failures, they have stopped moving. In fact, for some, they consider failure as something that must have stopped them from living their life. But consider, dear students, failures can become lessons, lessons learned. You know, remember, uh, I recall uh, Mahatma Gandhi who once said, You must fail. You must commit mistakes. It, he said, It is better for you that you commit mistakes. You must miss, commit mistakes. Because in making a mistakes, then you can learn from it. But mistakes can be good lessons because in life, there are more lessons to learn than mistakes. But lessons, mistakes turned into lessons can be a source of inspiration. Perhaps once in your life, you must have failed. But that failure can be a source of your own inspiration. There will be many moments in which you are to fail. But consider, that it should not be a reason for you to stop moving. Dear parents, you must have witnessed also how your children have failed. And you are still there for them. Your children need you as their source of inspiration. Parents also have their own share of failures. Parents also have their own share of successes. And since we are in this kind of environment in which we are not spared from any failure or success, 
It's good to look at life with a perspective. If we are to, to, to consider the, the readings that we have, you see, in the Book of Wisdom, it was mentioned a kind of person who is not so caring and one who is not so caring about other people. Usually, they only think about themselves and they don't care about other people. When we look at Jesus in the Gospel, we see, you see how Jesus was very clear about his own purpose. He cares so much about people. But even he cares for people, yet people have not understood him. What can we learn from, from the Lord? First, we must very, be very clear about what kind of life that we must pursue. What kind of life do you want to have? Now that you are moving up, perhaps you are confronted with a basic question, so what comes next? What am I going to do now that I am entering in the new stage of life? I would like to propose to you, dear students, four Ps. Four Ps that hopefully can help in your pursuit of life. What are these Ps? First P is prayer. Second P is purpose. Third P is passion. And fourth P, perseverance. Prayer. We can never claim that we have been successful in life without considering God journeying with us through life. We heard, we heard the, you know, the psalm telling us to be grateful always to God because God has always become there, has always become the source of life. He made himself our inspiration. So let's always have this time for prayer because life without prayer is like a tree without roots. Purpose. Everything that happens in life must have reason and purpose. And what is that purpose that you are holding on? Remember, you know, the famous sayings, when your life is lived with purpose, the life you live for is worth living. And what kind of purpose that you have to have? Don't just think of purpose just for yourself. Again, Consider that your life is not just meant for you. Our life is meant also for others. We have a song that we usually sing at the end of the Mass. And this song usually is sung during Lent, Lenten season. Walang sinuman ang nabubuhay para sa sarili lama. Purpose. Number three, third P, passion. We have to have passion. And what kind of passion should this be? It's a passion that is drawn from your prayer. It's a passion that is drawn from your purpose. A passion that allows you to, to go out of yourself, to find meaning in everything that you are doing. This passion becomes more alive when it becomes a kind of experience that you have. When you become an experience of God, when you become an experience of people who journey with you. And finally, perseverance. Never give up on life. Never give up. Because there is so much to life than just living. So as you celebrate with gratitude, you're moving up. Consider that there is so much in store for you, my dear students. And I would like to, you know, to thank the parents for journeying and continue to journey with their, with their daughters, with their children. You know that today, more than ever, we need parents who really accompany their, their children in their journey. 
So the, the young people of today are highly vulnerable. And in their vulnerability, they need their parents to accompany them, to guide them, to affirm them. The school can only do much. But if parents can really cooperate with the school, as a school cooperates with the parents, I think we can create a very good environment that the children need in order for them to grow and to develop. So my dear parents and my dear students, now that you are entering into a new stage of your life, first, to thank God for everything and to continue thanking Him because when we have God at the very center of our life, I tell you, life is different. We cannot afford to put God aside. We cannot do anything without Him. So as we continue with our Eucharistic celebration, I invite you to First of all, to be thankful for all the blessings that you have received, to be thankful to your parents, and parents also to be thankful to your, to your children. Let this day be a day of thanksgiving, a day to rejoice, because today the Lord has made for you. Our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we proclaim. disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, my Lord Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and the Saints have pleased you toward the ages, we merit to be co-heirs with in the life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 out as a sign of the Father's abiding presence in our life. 
Keep your hearts burning with God's light so that you may bring hope, joy, and peace wherever you go. May the Father protect you always by His grace and strengthen you with His love so that you may fulfill and carry on your mission to live as believers and sharers of salvation. Be faithful doers of the gospel with joy, hope, and courage. Amen. May the Son live in your love and service to your family. May you all live as believers of the vision, mission of St. Paul College, Pasig, as you go to the next stage of your academic life, senior high school, a holistic becoming in quest of truth, goodness, justice, and peace. Amen. May the Spirit breathe His life afresh in you and give you peace. Amen. As you journey in God's presence, may He bless you and keep you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go be living witnesses of God's goodness. My dear Paulinians, walk before the Lord as one family full of gratitude, love, and faithfulness. Thanks be to God. Sean Eurosario, SPC, our beloved directress, Dr. Celedonia Santos, member of the St. Paul College Pasig Board of Trustees, Sister Teresita Agana, SPC, our dearest principal, to all our SPCP sisters, to Dr. Ronald Santos, head of the Curriculum Development Board, our administrators, assistant principals, members of the faculty, staff, parents, guests, and to my fellow students here today, good afternoon. It is my honor to welcome each one of you to our Moving Up ceremony. We are gathered here today for one purpose, to celebrate and acknowledge the hard work exerted by each one of us throughout the school year. However, beyond this, our celebration today also marks the end of our journey as junior high school students. I am sure that the majority would agree with me when I say that grade 10, let alone the whole four years of our junior high school, was no walk in the park. Imagine that's four years of junior high school. That's about 100 or even more challenging performance tasks and assessments. All of us have had our tired days and sleepless nights. I myself found it challenging to balance all my academics, gift, production teamwork, and other extracurricular activities. No one here has had it easy. Each one of us here all went through our own different trials. However, what is common among us is the fact that we are all here today about to receive our certificates in this Moving Up ceremony. Now, when we look back at everything we've been through, we will no longer remember our junior high school days as a time we thought we would no longer survive school because of the huge amount of workload given to us. We won't remember junior high as the face of our lives when we had to build a model house with working circuits in roughly less than a month 
or when we had our first formal debate performance task, which most of us initially had no background on. It won't even be when we had to practice our graduation mass songs with high notes beyond our vocal range for two long weeks. What we will remember, though, is the remarkable fact that we were able to accomplish all of those tasks. Standing here in front of all of you, looking at the faces I have known since my preschool days, and seeing, seeing how we have all grown has made me realize that our long and difficult journey is a milestone worth racing a toast to. Later, as we walk up the stage, let us imagine how proud our parents are. They took time off from their busy schedules to come here on this special day to celebrate our moving up. Even our sisters, administrators, teachers, the people who helped shape who we are right now could not be more proud of us all. I think the word finally is the perfect word to encapsulate this ceremony. Today is the day that we finally see the fruits of all our labor. Four years of our hard work have finally paid off. We finally see and realize that every sacrifice we made was worth it. Since we came here to celebrate, let us give ourselves a round of applause for having overcome countless challenges and trials. As we enter a new phase of our lives, senior high school, let us keep in mind this quote from Theodore Roosevelt, remember to keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. I hope we never forget our humble beginnings here as junior high school students and all of our parents, administrators, teachers, classmates, and friends who all have helped us reach where we are right now. Good afternoon once again and welcome to the fifth Moving Up Ceremony of St. Paul College, Pasig. Sister Dedication, Sister Teresita, SPC Sisters, Dear teachers, parents, and students, good afternoon. It's been 10 years since I graduated from high school. I must admit, preparing for this speech meant that I had to revisit my old diary so I can relive all the worries of my 16-year-old self. I rediscovered that my concerns then mostly revolved on, number one, what my peers thought of me. Number two, why my crush didn't like me back. And number three, whether my efforts were enough to get into my dream school, which was UP. I'm happy to report that the universe responded to the lamentations of my third question. That brings me to the first insight I will share. If you have dreams, and I sincerely hope you do, write them down. This may sound obvious. Then again, with all the new gadgets available now, I'm not sure if the pen and paper is still the student's instruments of choice. I have to credit St. Paul for my fondness of journaling and note-taking, as it was a culture they successfully propagated. They even gave us a Polinian diary. Do you still have that now? Yes, okay. So I can still see in my mind's eye that um, our diary then had a dream page. And I filled this up in my fourth year with only four enumerations. Number one was to get into UP. Number two was to graduate cum laude. Number three was to get into UP law. And number four was to become a lawyer. Every single one of those came true. Not more, not less. So, by, by not specifying, for example, uh, a summa cum laude, I subconsciously calibrated all the efforts I was about to make. It was very interesting for me to learn that the future need not be a guessing game. You can actually dictate it. There are some scientific explanations as to why writing your goals down actually makes them come true. They say that you remember things better when you generate them versus when you merely read them. 
So when you write your goals down, you actually generate them twice. The first time by conceiving it in your head, and the second time when you actually process it and put it on paper. Simply put, by writing them down, we remember them better and subconsciously align all our efforts towards our goals. Life is short, make it purposeful. This leads me to my second insight. Trust the process. So, ever since I left high school, I lived my life according to those four bullet points in my Polinian diary. And I have to tell you that in between those four bullet points were ten grueling years that did not spare me of failure, sacrifice, and even loneliness. I have to genuinely thank St. Paul, my alma mater, for giving me a hard time. I was smiling when I was listening to the welcoming address because it must really be a common experience. We had so much homework, extracurricular activities, we had clubs, we had outreach, retreats, and um, so many other activities that later on I was thankful for because this gave me the tenacity that I would have eventually needed when I would leave school. You will soon learn, dear students, as you move up to senior high and as you move on to the real world, that there will be many chances for you to take what you might think is an easy way out. But do know that there are no shortcuts. Shortcuts simply do not work because there is something to be gained in every step of the process. To borrow an insight from Chief uh, Chief Justice Roberts from the U.S. Supreme Court. In life, you will be treated unfairly, and that's okay, so you'll know the value of justice. You will experience misfortune from time to time, and that's also okay. So you will realize the role of chance in life, and you will understand that your success is not always completely deserved, and that failure of others is also not completely deserved either. So this brings me to my final insight. In all your travails, sufferings, successes, and joys, I ask you, dear students, to remain humble. As the saying goes, when things go as planned, it is good. But when they don't, it is even better. Because it means that someone higher is in control. Humility is defined as the virtue of forgetting yourself. It is only when you forget yourself that you learn to actually be yourself. Why? When you forget yourself, you free your mind from self-absorption and you open it up to eagerly learning from all other people, appreciating the people around you who continuously support you, like the parents with us today. Your mind can focus on working properly instead of expecting praise. You create genuine friendships that don't ask for anything in return, but seek instead to make each other better people. Perhaps this was the kind of formation that St. Paul provided me, which allowed me to have my BFFs, my best friends for life. We have remained each other's guideposts throughout our lives, and we still consult each other for the major life decisions we make. In fact, I was just speaking with my classmate this morning and she was asking for advice about a major career decision. Now, humility can also enrich our relationship with God. And this is, I think, the most important point I want you to remember. When we pray, we must not simply ask and ask for what we think we want and need. We must say what Jesus said, not as I will, but as you will. By opening yourself up to God's will, you will discover that the most personal gifts that God has placed in your hearts and discern that your own path is what God wills and you will not be hopelessly imitating something that is not meant for you. So that's been 10 years since I graduated from high school. And I offer these answers to my 16-year-old self, who was always worried about what her peers thought of her. I'm also happy to report that, as it turned out, her crush actually liked her back. So, congratulations, dear students and dear parents. For this milestone, I wish you all a life well-lived. Thank you. 
Dedicacion U. Rosario, SPC, Dr. Celedonia Santos, Member of the Board of Trustees, Sister Teresita Agana, SPC, the SPC Sisters, Dr. Ronald Santos, our Assistant Principals, Ms. Ana Hernandez, Ms. Maricel Lacup, and Ms. Kathleen Pike, Administrators, Faculty Members, and Staff, our dear families, friends, my fellow, and my fellow Polinians, good evening. I am absolutely honored to be given the privilege of delivering the Thanksgiving message on behalf of the grade 10 students of St. Paul College, Pasig. St. Ambrose said, No duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks. Now, I encourage each of you to ponder, who are you grateful to? This afternoon's Moving Up ceremony is an opportunity to express our gratitude and honor the people who are responsible for our achievements, for without them, we would not be here today. To our Almighty God, who has bestowed His gifts and calling within us, and who understands our worth, thank you. In our quest for excellence, we witness our transformation as individuals who sacrifice ourselves in our sincere desire to be of service to others. Indeed, everything that we do is for your greater glory. To the SPCP sisters, administrators, faculty, and staff of St. Paul College, Pasig, we thank you for your committed and passionate drive to mold us into the Polinians that we are today. Your tireless passion and dedication have shaped us into academically prepared morally upright, and socially responsible Polinians. Your collective selflessness has inspired us to be generous in serving our community as you do. Truly, we are all blessed to have been given this opportunity to study in this school, and we will always be thankful for it. To our parents and grandparents, we thank you for sacrificing a great part of yourselves for us to be enrolled in this revered learning institution. You guide us every step of the way as we meet all challenges head on. Thank you for empowering us to pursue our dreams in life, for nourishing, supporting, guiding, and allowing us to freely choose how we want to use our God-given talents. I would also like to acknowledge my own parents and grandparents. Mama and Papa, both of you serve as my anchor, inspiration, and guide. You were always there during the hardest of times and were always ready to encourage me every time I seemed to encounter an insurmountable hurdle. You taught me how to be self-reliant, committed, kind, and compassionate. You are who I strive to be and I thank you for being my models. To my grandparents, who are likewise here today, thank you for being a beacon of light to my parents and to myself as well. To our classmates and batchmates, we thank you for bringing out the best versions of ourselves. I invite you to look to your left, to look to your right, and to look at all the people around you. Yes, these are the people who have been with you ever since day one and just like you had their own sets of highs and lows, triumphs and defeats. And though we may have different experiences here, we are all the same in that we have shared the same four years and to some of us who have been here since preschool, 12 years in St. Paul College, Basic. Hence, together, we were able to genuinely appreciate each other. To you, I say, go confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life you have imagined. As we all embark on our journey 
to senior high school, we should aspire to become better persons for others and be more attentive to the needs of those we serve. We should pay attention to that which we pursue with all our heart, soul, and mind. Who we will become is determined in large part not by what we acquire, but by what we give and how we give of ourselves. Today, we have before us the amazing chance to make the world a better place as a result of what we do for others. As St. Mother Teresa has said, we cannot all do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Good luck in senior high school and Godspeed. Congratulations and thank you. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. We pledge to be true to our dear school, St. Paul College, Pasig. To strive for excellence in everything we do. To honor our history and national heritage. To bear witness to Christ's mercy and love and to choose to walk in the truth. We promise to be Polinians always, with the charity of Christ for others, for our country, and for our God. My dear students, grade 10 completers, in the name of St. Paul College Pase, your school, I accept your promise to continue living out the virtues and values your Polinian education has inculcated in you. As you move up to senior high school, strive to uphold the excellence of your moral, spiritual foundation and academic formation. St. Paul College Pasig has been your cradle. It is our great joy to have you finish senior high school here. Congratulations.